Hello and welcome to a new SwiftUI tutorial. In this depart video series, we talk about how to navigate between views in SwiftUI while not relying on a navigation view. In the last part, we learn how to do this by using an observable object in the state object property wrapper. In this part, we look at how to accomplish the same behavior but more efficiently using an environment object. We are also going to apply a nice transition animation like this one. Let's quickly recap what we learned in the last part of this mini-series. We figured out how to navigate between different views using an observable object. In a nutshell, we created a view router and bound our mother view and the content views to it. Then we updated the page value assigned to the view router's current page property when clicking on the respective content views buttons. This causes the mother view to update its body with eventually showing the correct content view. But there is another more efficient way for achieving this functionality. Using an environment object. Feel free to download the current progress from GitHub. You can find the link in the description of this video. It's the navigating in Swift do I finish part one folder. Okay, let's get started. Maybe you're asking yourself, why should we change anything when our existing solution is sufficient? Well, it should become clear when looking at our app's hierarchy logic. The navigating in Swift UI app struct initializes a view router instance as an state object. It passes this instance to the root mother view. In the mother view, we initialize either content view alpha or content view beta while passing the view router instance to them. You see that we currently follow a strict hierarchy which passes the initialized view router as an state object downwards to the lowest of views. For our purposes, this not a big deal. But imagine a more complex app with a lot of views containing subviews that in turn contain subviews and so on. Passing down the primary initialized state object down to all subviews could get pretty messy. In one sentence, using an observable objects observed by using state objects can become confusing when we work with more complex app hierarchies. So what we could do instead is to initialize the view router once at the app's launch in a way that all views of our app hierarchy can be directly bound to this instance. Better said these vware observing this instance with no regard to the app's hierarchy. Thus we don't need to pass the view router downwards the hierarchy manually. The view router instance would then act like a cloud that flies above our app's code. All views would have access to without taking care of a proper initialization chain downwards the app's view hierarchy. Doing this is the perfect job for an environment object. But what is an environment object? An environment object is a data model that once initialized can be used to share information across all views of your app. The cool thing is that an environment object is created by providing an observable object. Thus we can use our view router as it is for creating an environment object. So once we defined our view router as an environment object, all views can be bound to it in the same way as a regular observable object, but without the need of an initialization chain downwards the app's view hierarchy. As said, an environment object needs to already be initialized when referring to it the first time. Since our root mother view will look into the view router's current page property, we need to initialize the environment object at the app's launch first. We can then automatically change the data assigned to the environment object's current page property from the content views, which then causes the mother view to refresh its body. Let's update our app's code accordingly. First, replace the view router state object property wrapper inside the mother view with an environment object. Now the view router property looks for a view router as an environment object instance. Thus, we need to provide our mother view preview struct with such an instance. When launching our app the first time our most high view in the app here key must immediately be provided with a view router instance as an environment object. Therefore we need to pass the state object we initialized in our navigating in SwiftUI app struct to the mother view as an injected environment object like this. Great. SwiftUI now creates a view router instance and injects it to the whole view hierarchy as an environment object when the app launches. Now all views of our app can be bound to this environment object. Next, let's update our content view alpha. Change the view router property to an environment object. Accordingly, we need to update the content view alpha preview struct. Hint, again only the content views alpha preview struct has an own instance of the view router. The content view alpha view itself is bound to the instance created at the app's launch. Let's repeat this for content view beta. And its preview struct.
The view router properties of our content views are now directly bound to the initial view router instance as environment objects. Therefore, we don't need to initialize them inside our mother view anymore. So let's update our mother view. And exactly this is the cool thing about environment objects. We don't need to pass down the view router of our mother view downwards to the content views anymore. This can be very efficient, especially for more complex hierarchies. Great. Let's run our app and see if that works. Now we are still able to navigate between our different views but with a more clean code. Before ending this tutorial, let's take a look at how to add a transition animation when navigating from page 1 to page 2. Doing this in SwiftUI is pretty straightforward. Take a look at the ViewRouter's current page property that we manipulate when we tap on the next and back button. As you learned due to the published property wrappers functionality, this triggers the bound mother view to refresh its body with eventually showing another content view. We can simply animate this navigation process by wrapping the code that changes the page value assigned to the current page property into a with animation clause. Let's repeat this for content view beta. Next, we present a transition animation when navigating to another content view. By default, the with animation statement uses a fade transition style. Note that most animations don't work properly within the preview simulator. Try running your app in the regular simulator instead. But instead, we want to show a pop up transition when navigating from content view alpha to content view beta. To do this, open the motherview.swift file and add a transition modifier when calling content view beta. You can choose between several preset transition styles or create even a custom one. For adding a pop up transition, we choose the scale transition type. Awesome. With just a few lines of code, we added a nice transition animation to our app. That's it. We learn it when and how to use environment objects in SwiftUI. We also learn it how to add a transition animation to a view showing up. You are now capable of navigating between views in SwiftUI by using two ways. Either you put your views into a navigation view hierarchy or you create an external view router as an observable or environment object. We've uploaded the whole source code of this app to GitHub. Check the link in the description for this. We hope to see you in the next video. Until then make sure you subscribe to this channel for more SwiftUI tutorials.